What's up everybody? Caster Crash Course here, and today we're going to be talking about yellow orange orb control. So this deck got me interested in Caster because it lets you put cards from your hand into the break zone and generate free advantage by your opponent having to swing at you with that. And uh, it just, it's really fun. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first card we're playing is four, Crispy Cookie. Uh, Crispy Cookie is our one drop beater. He, uh, he's vanilla too, which is funny. And uh, he just, you wanna see him early game so you can apply pressure. And he also lets you recur him later on with some of the other cards in the deck. So there's no reason not to play four. Worst case scenario, he's a free guard. And uh, that's not too bad for a one drop. So moving forward, we have three Melty Ice Cream. Uh, we're playing Ice Cream over the Macaroon because early game, the 3000 attack lets you get over a lot of early game attackers from your opponent. And uh, the fact that he might banish himself is not too much of a concern due to the fact that you can recur him or you know, just let him die for other cards. Not too bad. Up next, we're only playing one Crepe. Uh, Crepe is good, but this deck has a really high break count, and uh, he's, not the he's not the best break. But he is a Sweets, and we do play cards that synergize with Sweets, so you want to play the one just for that. And uh, sometimes if you get him in your breaks, hey, it's free card. Uh, up next, we have a much better three drop break. We have four. Ouroboros. Um, Ouroboros is real good because she just lets you cycle through cards and get cards set up in your graveyard to synergize for later plays. And you want her in your shields much more often than you want this, so we're playing way more. Um, up next we have my favorite card in the deck, Extravagant Necklace. Uh, your opponent will never be happy to hit this card out of your break zone because this card is so much pressure in one four drop. So its body is not bad, it's not the best, but the fact that when it dies, it puts a card from your hand into the break zone, you just get so many free swings in because your opponent won't want to answer it. Because they know whatever you're going to put in is worse than this. So you can force them to hit it by putting it in reverse mode. Or you can just keep swinging and getting cheap shots in. And if they answer it by killing it with a spell or with an attack, they've wasted that resource that could have been used on a bigger threat. And you went plus one by putting a card into your break zone. So this card's crazy. Uh, the reason we're only playing three of it though is because we are playing four Pancake. Uh, Pancake is a big butt. She likes to sit in reverse and just stall out, but most importantly, she uh, adds a creature back to your hand. So my opinion is that it's much better to recover the necklace your opponent just killed than to have to worry about digging for another necklace out of your deck. Or if you've uh, killed off an ice cream already, you can just get it back with Pancake and then make another trade. So I think three, four Pancake is definitely the way to go. Next we have three, Death Touch Turkey. Uh, I like Toxic Turkey because, I mean, it's a walking removal spell. That's always a strong card in any, for any game or format. So, play in three because four is too many. But you want to see her, so that's the number. And lastly, for Servants, we have Bamanon. Uh, this is the other best card in your deck. She breaks two orbs with a swing, and when she comes into play, the fact that you can put any two cards from your hand into your break zone guarantees that you're going to put down two cards your opponent's just not going to want to hit. And uh, with another card in the deck, we can set it up so that we're putting two cards into our orb zone every time we put her into play, which is basically going to be every turn, and all the while putting on massive pressure by being able to break two of your opponent's orbs at the same time. Uh, she's an awesome card. And that artwork's gorgeous, I love it. Uh, coming up next, we've got our Conjures. We're playing 
for Paper Eating Virus. Um, it's it's a three drop to uh, make your opponent discard two. That's pretty good in most games. Um, the fact that it's a break means you can play for free. That's even better. You want to try to hit an early game so that you can leave your opponent with little to nothing so that you can slide through and win the game early. But, um, you know, seeing it late game's not bad either. So we're playing four because all around it's a strong card. Up next, we have two Total Eclipse. Uh, one of the best removal spells in the game right now. It just kills any one servant with no restrictions. And that's awesome because we're going to play it for free out of our break zone. You should never hard cast this card. If you're hard casting it, you're either in a bad spot or you're playing the deck wrong. And in the same vein as that, we're also playing two Expensive Jar. Um, if you're digging for answers with this card hard casted, you're already losing the game. You should be putting these two cards in your orb zone every time you see them because it's just it's how the deck plays and you want to you know make, get free advantage why pay five when you can pay zero uh, moving on to our casters we have one lily of chocolate uh, like i said we played 12 sweets in this deck so uh, the fact that she can banish sweets from your graveyard to be a walking kill spell is real good especially because all caster effects are instant speed so literally no reason not to play at least one of our in an orange deck. Uh, we have two. Sunny. Sunny is one of the best casters right now because uh, drawing a card when your opponent discards a card is great because I mean you can force your opponent to discard cards but also the fact that if your opponent tries to activate a caster ability and you you get free advantage off your opponent trying to answer your cards with abilities. So Drawing cards always good. Uh, next we play two Mona Styla. Uh, Mona is a pretty good card. She's not the best caster in the deck, but she taps for orange, which is always nice. And also you can break up your opponent's swings, or rather their uh, combos with their graveyard. And I mean, it doesn't come up often, but when it does, real good card to have. Uh, moving on, we have two orange Pekka level one. She synergizes with Cookie. I mean, it's the only target right now, but the fact that you can just free cookies, free cookies all day, uh, she's real good. Uh, lastly, for orange, we have two Tricker Heather. Um, you play so many removal spells in orange, whether they be on creatures or on conjures. Uh, there's no reason not to play Heather. She lets you draw cards off of basically your whole deck and that's awesome moving on to our yellow casters we have one lumiel she's a wall breaker if your opponents hold up on an orchid or something of a sim similar caliber you can just tap her and then make it just really easy to break for that turn and try and push through for some shields uh next we have two ayutayla um nothing really special to say about her discard a caster draw card just helps you search for more answers. Playing yellow, might as well. Um, next we have Ruka. Uh, her ability to let you gain attack is nice. Uh, it doesn't, it's not the best, but it is generic and she synergizes with the rest of the deck in that you have a lot of draw cards. So yeah, playing her. Uh, next we have two, Rafina. Rafina is one of the best cards in the game, I think, in that she is essentially free color fixing and effect stacking for any any deck, and that's awesome. And we're playing yellow, so we're playing two. In decks not playing yellow, I'd recommend at least one. And lastly, we have my favorite caster, Ran. Uh, Ran is awesome. She is literally any any other game with this card, this card would be banned immediately, is my in my opinion. Just the fact that she is. Free spot removal dodging, free boosting. I mean, the boosting effect's not as good. It's mostly the spot removal dodging for sure. And in this deck, there's a real nasty combo where if you have a Bominon and a Ran on the table, you can swing for the 4K, break two orbs, or just kill a big monster. And then if they try and answer your Bominon, you ran it back to your hand, or you just leave it on the table until the start of your during your opponent's end phase or the start of your next turn. 
put it back in your hand, play it again, two more orbs for free. And you could just do that every turn. Just every turn, two more shields. And you can keep swinging. And it makes this deck a real monster to play against. Because if you can get to that point where you're putting two shields down every turn, you, there's no reason not to win the game. So yeah, uh, that's this deck. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video.